Okay, this is a continuation of section 1.6, MAC 1105. We had just begun to look at solving equations involving absolute value, and we were on this first example. Uh, we had discussed that when you solve an absolute value equation, you need to isolate the expression inside the absolute value bars first. So in other words, if anything's being subtracted or added, move that. If there are multipliers, add that so that you get these absolute value bars by themselves. So we had already moved the 7, became a positive 7 once it moved to the right-hand side. Combining with 13 was 20. We still had a multiplier on the same side as the absolute value bars. So next step would be to divide that right off of those absolute value bars, leaving us with just the expression inside the bars. Then with respect to removing these absolute value bars, it has to do with what the absolute value bars mean. They actually mean distance. So when you see the absolute value bars around any expression, that means what possible values could be right inside the absolute value bars that would be a distance, that's what those bars mean, of 10 from zero. What numbers are 10 spaces from zero? That would be positive 10 or negative 10. So that's what you're looking for when you talk absolute value, which is the reason why it always comes out positive because it actually means distance. And we know that distance is positive. You don't you know, say to someone, I live negative 10 miles from the school. So distance is connotated as a uh, positive type of concept. And that is what ab the absolute value bars mean. So that gives us the right to remove these bars by saying that that expression inside could be equal to 10 or it could be equal to negative 10 and still satisfy this equation. Okay, then we're going to solve each of these. For instance, if we solve this one, we'd be subtracting 5 from each side, and that would give us, I'll put these up here, x is equal to, these 5s would be gone, 10 take away 5, that would be 5. So that's one of our answers. If we solve the other one, which was x plus 5 equal to negative 10, again, we would be subtracting 5 from each side, and you can just use the arrows if you want to instead of writing it twice and you would end up having x is equal to negative 15 in that case. So those are the two solutions, and they can be checked very easily um, right in the absolute value of the original equation. So if you were going to check the 5, we'll just do this mentally real quick. Put a 5 in here, it would be 5 plus 5 is 10. Absolute value of 10 is 10. 10 times 2 is 20. Minus 7 is 13. So that one checks out. If you were to plug in this other solution, negative 15, that would also work. Negative 15 plus 5 is negative 10. Absolute value of negative 10, 10. 10 times 2 is 20. 20 take away 7, 13. Okay, so we have two answers, and we also mentally check them, although you can write out the steps when you're checking them. Um, absolute value in the next problem contains a fraction, so that's the only extra bonus in that problem that you're going to have to get rid of the fraction, but you're still going to do all the same steps that we did in the previous example, which is to begin by thinking, how am I going to isolate these absolute value bars, the expression inside here? So the first thing you're going to do is always remove anything that's added or subtracted that's on the outside of the absolute value bar. So we're going to move this to the other side. It becomes a negative 6. That's the same thing as subtracting 6 from both sides. It's just another way to show it. So there's no 6 there anymore. Now you just have the multiplier. And you have a 12 on the right-hand side. Now removing the multiplier, we're going to divide both sides by 2. And then we end up having just the expression inside the absolute value bars. Okay, once you get that expression by itself again, the question becomes what numbers 
are a distance of six spaces from zero. That's what this expression is allowed to be because anything that any number that is six spaces from zero has an absolute value of six. So the numbers that are six spaces from zero are positive six and negative six. This expression can be either one of those. So you go ahead and set up two equations stating that this expression, this value could be equal to six or it can be equal to negative six. <laughs> okay, so then we have this extra step where we don't want to solve the equation with the fraction, although you could if you want to, you could leave the fraction in there. Um, either way, that's up to you and just uh, get rid of it on your very last step by multiplying by the reciprocal, or you can multiply through by the LCD. That's up to you. Um, if you want to leave it in there, we can do, I mean, I, I'm, I think I'm going to demonstrate getting rid of the uh, fraction just so you can have some practice with figuring out the LCD. Very easy to figure out in this case, and that's because there's only one fraction. So that one fraction, its denominator is automatically the LCD, meaning you're going to multiply each and every term by a 2 in order to get rid of that fraction. You can't just multiply the fraction by 2. You have to multiply every term by that LC, whatever you decide the LCD is. So there is 2 times the first term. Here's 2 times 5 halves, and then 2 times 6. And then we'll do our work for this other one over there. Okay, so that gives us an 8. You're going to see that if you've chosen the proper LCD, you will no longer have fractions here. The 2's cancel, leaving you for this middle term, for this second term, with negative 5x. And then on the other side, we have a 12. We would be moving the 8 at that point, which would make it a negative 8, leaving us with negative 5x is equal to 4, and then finally dividing that negative 5 right off there to give us a solution of x equal to 4 fifths. You can leave that negative down at the bottom, report it off to the side, or you can even put it in the top if you want. So there's one solution. We're going to do the same steps here. We're going to get rid of this fraction that's right here so that we can solve the equation without a fraction by multiplying each and every term by the LCD. So 2 times 4 minus 2 times the fractional term, and then 2 times negative 6. So this would give us 8. Here the 2's would cancel, leaving us with the negative, or you could call it the minus sign, the 5, and the x. Those are all the things that are left over. And then on the right, we get a negative 12. Again, moving the 8 over to the right-hand side, which really means we're subtracting 8 from each side, so that 8 is gone, leaving us with negative 5x is equal to negative 20. Dividing both sides by negative 5 in order to isolate for x, we end up with x is equal to 4. And you can check either one of those. A little trickier to check just because of the fraction, but... Um, of course, it's doable. Okay, so if you did want to check this to see if these solutions are correct, we could just go to, there's a 4 inside the absolute value, then there's a minus 5 halves times whatever you believe the solution to be. We think that one of our solutions is 4 fifths. And if you didn't make any mistakes, and then th there was a, let's see, a plus 6 right after that absolute value, and an 18 over here. So if that's truly a solution, it's going to give us an 18 on both sides. Okay, so let's see. Let's work in here first. The 5s cancel. That leaves you with negative 4 divided by 2. That negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, but there's another negative in front of it, so it really becomes positive 2. 
So inside here you have four and you have a positive two. Again, fives cancel. This ends up the leftovers right in here would be negative four divided by two, negative two, but that means you have to switch it back to positive two. Don't forget the multiplier of two, the additional six right here. And we're trying to show that what's on the left side is 18 if it is. So this would be uh, six in here, absolute value of six is six. Six times two is 12, 12 plus six, perfect. Okay, so this checks out, this is a correct solution. If you wanted to check the other answer that you got, which was a four, again, you would also put it into that same original equation. So it would be two multiplied by the absolute value, and the absolute value is four minus five halves times the x value. Close the absolute value, add six. We're looking for it to be equal to 18. <clears throat> All right, so if you're gonna check what's inside here, what's inside this absolute value bars is four minus, and then here it's 20. Five times four is 20 divided by two. The only thing that's a divisor in this term right here is the two. So 20 divided by two is 10. So you got all that going on. So you really have a negative six inside your absolute value bars when you plug that four in. You have the multiplier of two, the addition of six. We're trying to prove that it's equal to 18. And if it is, then our second solution is correct. So let's see, absolute value of negative six is six. Six times two is 12. We're adding six, so 12 plus six, perfect that does equal to 18. So that checks out, therefore this solution. So just a little bit practice with you plugging in your answers. All your answers can be checked regardless of the type of equation you're solving or the technique you're using by plugging it into the original problem. Okay, that leaves us with the last page where we are solving equations that are uh, considered to be in quadratic form. So there are various types of equations, um, and these are quadratic trinomials. Quadratic form means you have three terms, and basically this power, the higher power, will be double the lower power, and then you'll have a constant. Okay, so in the two variables, the higher power will be double whatever this lower power is, which you can see is true in this problem. So that's quad, what we call quadratic form. And then if you don't recognize what the power is right there in the middle, all radicals can be written in power form. So this is really x. There's one of them inside. This is a square root whose index is 2. So this is the same thing as x to the one-half. This square root of x is the same thing as x to the one-half written in power form. So notice that this is a power of one, the bigger power. This is a power of one-half, and the number one is double that power in the middle term. And then, of course, there's a constant. So this is also considered to be in quadratic form. You just have to recognize that square root of x can be written in exponential form or power form. Likewise for this last problem. This problem has negative exponents, but still there are three terms. There's a constant, there's two variables with powers, and this power is double this one. So that's how you know that you have a quadratic form equation. We are going to solve these the way your textbook and my math lab, of course, which mimics the textbook, follows and that's going to be by the method of substitution although there are other methods it just depends substitution is often used when you know the terms become more complicated such as this and this but they can all you know they can all be done by just factoring just to, you know for some students it just gets away from them when the path you know because factoring is a sore spot for students on a good day when all of the powers are just um, positive, regular integers. But once you start making those 
exponents, um, fractional and negative, it becomes a little bit harder. And so we fall back to the method of substitution in, in order to make it look like a regular quadratic equation.